My approach to making films is completely different than my approach to making sculptures and paintings. When I make a film, I usually approach it with a question and a thing I don't know how to do that I want to learn how to do. And making the work is the process of developing the question, developing into knowing how to do the thing I don't know how to do. And within that, exposing and bringing forth a feeling that I have in myself and bringing that feeling in relationship to the site or the period of time or the, the objects that I'm exploring. We had some, some very key references when making the film. Very simple things like looking at the horizon line, um, finding where that might have been in a painting, uh, overlaying that into where we find the horizon line when we're shooting. In the still, the still live shots, composing those from references to paintings, um, thinking about lighting compositionally. I worked with a, a really um, talented DP, Jaron Blaschke, and he had shot The Witch with Robert Eggers, um, and so he was skilled at this kind of shooting. One of the reasons I'm here today is because the Yale Center for British Art has lent seven works to your exhibition, Goodnight Moon. These are from the Romantic period and include works by Samuel Palmer, William Blake, and John Linnell. May I ask you, what draws you to a particular artist such as Palmer? I mean, I, I think in a way these, these works were inside of me before I made Enclosure because of my time working at the Yale Center for British Art. They, I, I just felt they were there, I don't know. So I arrived at it through osmosis. And yeah. you studied under an eminent Palmer um, scholar as well during your time at the Courtauld Institute in London. opportunity, yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, it, it's odd how life traces that. I never meant to be focused so much on British art, and yet I somehow ended up in that zone. The enclosure of land in Britain is going to underwrite the acquisition and essentially the theft of land in the new world. And today, with these urgent questions about reparations and the shifts in labor, and um, the shifts in land use, enclosure feels um, very present. When I started doing enclosure in 2018, I was looking at the agrarian British landscape and its depictions. And one of the things that I noticed is that the time period in which enclosure was set, which is the late 1600s, early 1700s, is really not a moment in which the landscape is depicted. It's portraiture, it's still lives. We're not seeing depictions of the land at large. And part of the reason for that is that so much of the British landscape was common or owned by royalty, untouched. So the idea of possessing land and therefore possessing a picture of your land didn't really exist. But what started to happen and, and what enclosure touches on is this mass privatization of the land during the enclosure acts, which lasted over 400 years, but I, I look at towards the beginning in the 1600s in my film. And during that privatization, the land was burned, uh, trees were felled, hundreds of thousands of people were displaced from their homes. Um, in, so, in a sense, it was a massive, both environmental and social catastrophe. I was reading this biography on Shakespeare in 1609, and it, there was like a passage that described him going back and forth from Stratford-upon-Avon into London. On the side of the road, there would just be thousands of displaced people on this kind of like dirt road, and, and that he would pass back and forth between these people. And that when he was working on King Lear, which is about land possession and dispossession, that it doesn't come out of just familial inheritance, it actually comes out of a direct plight that was happening in the British landscape at that moment. America was, as we know, colonized by religious zealots, snake oil dealers, disinherited third sons who couldn't make a life. And so I started reading about who these people were and I, I took uh, one figure and melded it with another figure and made him this kind of key, slimy, snaky alchemist, main character in Enclosure. The new world is nothing but luscious green, waiting to be taken and 
clear claimed. The leader of the group, his name is Jacko, spelled J-A-C-C-K-O. So he's decided I'm a disinherited second son, I'm gonna go to America. This is my utopic dream. And at the time people had like all kinds of wild projections about America, like they would find gold immediately. And he's assembled, and we call them in the film Road Babies, uh, people on the road, basically, in the landscape. People who are from this displaced class of people who are just homeless now and lost. And then he has this one follower named Recent, who's the main character of the film. And we gave her the name Recent, kind of in the tradition of like chastity or liberty or uh, this kind of Christian name. But Recent is our own conjecture, our own make, made up idea of like, what if you gave her a name that's sort of related to time? And Recent, because she's pretty and young and a girl, becomes the front man of the group as they go to predate families, hustle families out of their land. And so they arrive upon this family, and it is a widow and her young daughter and a farmhand, and it's just the three of them. And they have this land, and she doesn't know what to do with it, and she's illiterate which is the kinds of people that would have been preyed on. And Recent appears, and through a whole little scheme they develop, uh, to basically manipulate them out of her, uh, out of their deeds. And, um, and in the end, they successfully do that, leaving her homeless, just as they, the followers once were. However, when they arrive at the, at the house, those three people, the daughter and the wife and the lover, have their own ideas about what they're gonna do in this moment of transformation. The mother just wants to keep her land and, and live her life. The lover also has seen the same pamphlets that Jacko has seen about the new world. Even before Jacko comes on the scene is imagining ways that they could sell their land and, and do that. In fact, maybe he's trying to do the same thing that Jacko's trying to do to her, which is just steal her land and, and go, but it just shows the prevalence of this, this thinking, this projection, this fantasy. And then her daughter um, has received and seen pamphlets from an organization we made up called the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood is based on these characters in, in Winston, this Marxist uh, British film from the 70s, who were rising up against the enclosure and were standing up for people to keep their land and they were like the good guys. So the daughter of the woman uh, who owns the house has, is also like a bit crazy. She's mentally kind of unhinged, but she's like proselytizing the brotherhood's spirit and ideas. And in the end, um, her, the lover, the farmhand like locks her up to to keep her from stopping the mother from selling the land. And these issues around labor and the land are embedded in Palmer's work as well. At the time he's making this series of work, his moonshines, he's living in Shoreham, into the southeast of England, um, in the county of Kent. And it's the late 1820s. And the people who are working the land at this period are on essentially starvation wages. And this is what he can observe as he leaves the house, his house in Shoreham. And what he's capturing is both the ti a timeless practice of people gathering in the harvest to the light of the harvest moon, but a way of life that is seriously under threat. The nobles have begun clearing the woods, and this brings out bears who need to One female bear became obsessed with killing me. And maybe the last character that I'll touch on is a very briefly noted character, but she appears out of the woods and she gives a, almost like a poetic song a bit about what's happened to her. Essentially like a bear eating her family. At the time, there was also this symbolic transformation of, of uh, the function of animals in visuality. And um, for thousands of years, the bear had been a kind of function of uh, the strength in the landscape and a kind of pagan orientation. And the bear was being wildly eradicated and now replaced by the lion um, 
in British iconography and all over Europe. Uh, and so there was oddly, at the same moment of enclosure, a widespread bear killing spree. I don't seek to make like a political argument or um, some kind of agenda around environmentalism in what I'm, what I'm doing. It's more like he's not facing the issue head on, he's pointing to it.